IRIS is a centrally controlled energy management system for multi-occupancy dwellings, such as student accommodation. It comprises a master interface unit situated in or close to the comms room and secondary interface units situated in designated electrical riser cupboards around the site. Each room requires a control unit, a power unit, a key switched fuse spur and the heat source, electric heaters or wet radiators. If wet radiators are installed, a valve actuator is also needed. The master interface unit sends and receives information and instructions via the secondary interface units to and from each room, using the site's existing electrical wiring. This is known as mains borne signalling. Equipment connected to the electrical circuit in the building places a tiny signal on the earth and neutral wiring. Tones are transmitted along the wires. These are like two very high frequency musical notes. A receiver on the circuit detects these tones and decodes them into the ones and zeros that make up digital communication. The same principles apply if iris is connected to water heating control, leak detection, hop sensors or any other iris product. Energy managers view the iris portal via the internet and can monitor individual rooms and hot water tanks. Profiles can be set temperatures and times adjusted, and alerts are sent about unusual environmental conditions such as water leaks and CO2, humidity, light and decibel levels without having to enter the room. This is how IRIS is configured. The secure portal displays the data collected by the master interface unit. The master interface unit uses either the site's existing data network or CAT5 cable to send and receive data from the secondary interface units, which in turn communicate with the room's control unit using mains borne signalling. The control unit controls the heat source in the room through a power unit. Modules within the control unit monitor the room's environmental conditions. Data collected by the control unit is transferred back to the master interface unit in the same way but in the opposite direction. To ensure reliable communications throughout the system, it is essential that wiring is firmly connected at all terminals. Particular attention must be paid to the consistency of the earth line. There are separate videos explaining how to install electric heating, wet heating, hot water control and leak detection sensors. All wiring should be carried out by a competent electrician working in accordance with current regulations. Identify the appropriate power supply and perform procedures to ensure the circuits are completely isolated. The supply should be locked in the off position and safe working practices should always be observed. These are the iris components required in each room to control an electric heating system. The control unit has a screen, a PIR motion sensor, and up and down buttons that occupants use to control temperatures. These buttons also enable you to find the serial number and test the heater. The power unit provides the control unit with separated extra low voltage, or SELV, and a 16 amp switching capacity. It has a red active LED that lights when the heater is drawing current, and a green power LED to show that power is reaching the unit. The key switch fuse spur is used to isolate the heater, power unit and control unit for maintenance or replacement of components. The key prevents unauthorised disconnection of the circuit and ensures the system is powered and providing room data 24 hours a day, 365 days per year, so please make sure it is not left in the room. Finally, this is the No Controls electric panel heater. The dimension of the control unit and the key switch fuse spur is 85mm square. They are a standard single gangplate size and require a 25mm deep surface patris, dry lining plastic box or metal sunken box with two mounting points. If they have four lugs, remove the top and bottom ones. The power unit dimensions are 146mm by 85mm and it is a standard double gangplate size. It requires a 35mm deep, surface patris, dry lining plastic box or metal sunken box, with two mounting points. Inside the room, a couple of considerations should be made before installation 
to ensure maximum performance. Is the specified heater the correct output for the room size? A rule of thumb for output is 100 watts per square meter, but it is worth employing a specialist to carry out an accurate heat loss calculation. The positioning of the control unit and the heaters will dramatically affect the performance. Position the control unit centrally in the main body of the room, avoiding narrow entrance lobbies. Appliances that generate heat should not be in proximity of the controller, for example televisions, desktop computers, fridges or ventilation systems. Position the control away from any non-ambient airflow, hot or cold. The control unit should be installed at least 300mm away from the nearest edge of the heater and mounted at around chest height. 1.2 to 1.4 meters from the finished floor level and should be easily accessible for operation. Consideration should be made for rooms used by people with disabilities. Installation at 500 millimeters from the heater and 900 millimeters from the floor ensures people using wheelchairs can access the control. Avoid positioning close to a window and keep the installation away from curtains, blinds, coat hooks or room dividers that can hinder airflow. The PIR monitors an angle of 58 degrees from the sensor. The area is 5 metres wide at a 4.5 metre distance. Please bear this in mind, making sure the sensor has a clear view of the room, without obstructions or the potential to be covered. Wiring. There are four products used in this installation. The control unit. The power unit. A double pole isolator. A key switched fuse spur should be used and the no-controls heater. The control unit is an electrostatic sensitive device and therefore care should be taken not to touch the printed circuit board. Heaters supplied by Prefect Controls will have two wires, live and neutral. However, if heaters are already installed and there is an earth wire, we'll show you what to do with that later. The neutral wire from the heater is connected to the neutral terminal on load side of the power unit. The live wire from the heater connects to the load terminal on the power unit. Using three core cables, connect the live terminal on the power unit to the load side live out terminal on the isolator and the other neutral terminal on the power unit to the load side neutral on the isolator. Insert the earth wire between the power unit and the isolator load earth terminal. Using standard 6 core low voltage alarm cable, connect the control unit to the power unit, ensuring the coloured wires going to the terminals match. White wire from terminal 1 on the control unit to terminal 1 on the power unit, blue terminal 2 to 2, green 3, yellow 4, black 5 and red 6. The length of the data cable should not exceed 6 metres. Do not use a solid core data cable. Ensure all terminals are secure, but do not over-tighten. Finally, connect the supply live, neutral and earth mains to the supply side live, neutral and earth on the isolator. If connecting to an existing heater and there is an earth on the heater cable, connect this to the load side earth terminal on the power unit. If the heater has integrated manual controls, they should be set to maximum and where possible, locked. Heaters with electronic controls are not compatible with IRIS and will need to be replaced. When connecting to Prefect Accessio or Atlantic panel heaters, you will need to insert the energy lock key, which is supplied with the control unit. The heater will not operate without this key. Holding the key with the tooth at the top, insert it into the slot on the heater and push until it is flush. This enables the heater to operate when the control unit calls for heat. Testing the heater. The heater can be tested using the control unit. Press and hold the up button and then press the down button three times in quick succession. This puts the control unit into test mode. Now press the down button one more time to enter test mode L2. This will turn the heater on. The screen will indicate amps being drawn. New panel heaters will give off vapour and an odour when switched on for the first time. It is good practice to open the window while carrying out this test. We recommend a burn-off period of at least two minutes to ensure that when the occupant returns and uses the heater for the first time, the fire alarm is not activated. 
After two minutes in test mode, the control unit will revert to standard operation. If the heater is still giving off vapour, please repeat this process. When the control units have been installed, the master interface unit needs to identify each of their locations. The block, the floor and the room number. This we call addressing the room. It is essential that this is done accurately, so we know that we are controlling the correct room. A location list will have been drawn up prior to installation. What we need from you is the serial number of each control unit and which room it is in. Each control unit has a five digit serial number. To find this, press and hold the down button and then press the up button three times in quick succession. The serial number will appear on the screen. Do not confuse this with the manufacturing number that is printed on a label on the back of the unit. The number on the screen is what we need to assign to a room, so we can begin our commissioning process. You should log the serial numbers on an Excel spreadsheet. We can provide you with a template for this if required. It cannot be stressed enough how important it is that this information is recorded accurately. Any mistakes or omissions will result in a callback to rooms that have been incorrectly logged. Leaving the room. If you are working on a project where rooms are occupied, please ensure that when you are finished you don't leave anything behind and the room is left as you found it.